Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse, and today we're starting a new Elder Kings 2 campaign, and we're playing as Chief Yashnag, the Orc King of Falkreath. And Orcs are of course the standard strong warrior race that's usually portrayed as barbarians by others, which isn't necessarily true. They do value personal strength, but they also value honor. And those traits created a very unique way of choosing a ruler, which we'll have some fun with in this campaign. But we'll get into that later, first we have a little bit of a lore tidbit about this guy. Following the sack of Orsinium, Yashnag and his tribe fled east to their ancestral lands in Skyrim. Svartr holding power in the western part of the province was unable to stop the orcs, and they claimed their chiefdom in Falkreath. After holding Falkreath for a few decades, Yashnag and his champions were challenged to duels and defeated by the former Jarl of Falkreath's son, Hakvild. And we're gonna have to find this Hakvild and beat him. Surrounded by enemies, will Yashnag and his line fail, leaving orcs no choice but to scatter once more? Or will you stay strong? Keep the chiefdom of Falkreath as orcish lands and forge a new Orsinium here in the Crucible of War. And that's gonna be kind of the goal, at least short term. But let's just jump into the game and have a look at what we're playing with. So welcome to our small kingdom of Falkreath, which wasn't what it was called in the character selection screen, but that's fine. It's located in the southern mountains of Skyrim, so we're gonna be fighting lots of Nords. But let's start by taking a look at us. We are Wrathful, Just, and Ambitious, which is a couple of really good traits for us, especially Wrathful and Just, because uh, both of those are virtuous in our religion, so it's gonna give us a bunch of piety. We're also a brilliant strategist, which is gonna be really good, since we are gonna be fighting a lot. We're also an aspiring blade master, a berserker and strong, so we're gonna be an absolute beast on the battlefield, and it's gonna give us a little bit more piety, so we're gonna be really pious. We're also scarred and born under the birth sign of the mage, which isn't exactly the most flavorful birth sign for us, but it is actually going to be pretty good for us, because it is going to put us just over the like threshold of getting us spells to start with. And uh, we don't have a lot of spells, but it is going to give us a couple of decent spells and some rituals, which is going to be pretty helpful. We're also an absolute monster on the battlefield because of all of our prowess. And our skills are pretty mediocre, except for our martial, which absolutely makes sense considering our, our traits and abilities and stuff. So that's going to be really good. Now, we are going to need a lifestyle, and we're of course going to go into martial. And we already have a couple of points in strategist, which is going to be pretty good. It's going to give us, well, cheaper castle spell -y. Don't know if that's, well, it's, it doesn't hurt. And it's going to give a bunch of our man at arms, a lot of bonuses, which is always pretty good. We're gonna get siege weapon efficiency, which is good once we get some siege weapons. We'll probably get some pretty early, because it's good to have. And it's gonna give us raid speed and supply capacity. But we can't raid right now, which is an absolute travesty, since we are orcs, we should be able to raid. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into land raids. We might not like finish the tree right away, but the first point is gonna give us the ability to raid. And uh, we are getting 35 points a month, which is about a little bit more than 400 a year. So it's gonna take about two and a half years for us to get a point. So in the meantime, we're just gonna... Actually, we're just gonna fight a bunch of wars first, so it's okay that we can't raid right away. We can wait for it, but we are gonna want to raid. And I think we're just gonna go into prowess, mostly because, well, it's gonna be pretty good for leading armies. And prowess is actually gonna give us a lot of bonuses, and you'll see why when we get into our religion. So we're gonna select that. We also don't have a wife, so we're gonna need that. And we can actually have three wives, or a wife and two secondary wives. So our primary wife, we are gonna just marry for traits. And get a just a good wife with some good stats. We do have a lot of kids, but I want lots of kids because... Uh, well, our, I'm gonna just tell you the interesting succession law, because basically... Our children will fight to the death over who gets to rule, at least among the ones who want to rule. So we're gonna want lots of kids, so the strongest can come out and just lead our tribe. So we are gonna want someone with good stats, just as a co-ruler. 
And uh, you're pretty good. You are also intelligent. And I wouldn't mind having a bunch of intelligent orcs running around. Because we're already gonna, like, pass down strong. So I would have liked, like, Hale or Herculean or something like that. But we only have, like, intelligence and beauty. And I think intelligence is more important than uh, beauty for now. So we're gonna go with you. We are gonna find some secondaries. But actually, we can... We can wait for that, wait for this proposal to go through, and then we're gonna go and get some secondary spouses for some alliances and stuff, because alliances is gonna be important. So, we are also the head of our own dynasty, and we do have a legacy to choose, and we're just gonna go House of Warriors, because we're, we're an orc tribe, we're gonna conquer our everything, so prowess and knight effectiveness is gonna be great, especially since... Uh, the knight effectiveness is... We're gonna rely heavily on our knights. Because knights are gonna be just terminators in our in our army. So we're gonna go for that. There are some other good ones that we could get, go for. But warfare is just too fitting for us. And we don't have the raiding one. So we're just gonna go warfare. And that's gonna be great. So our religion is Code of Malakath. And... Contempt for the weak basically is what the orcs is all about. We don't want weak rulers or weak people in general. Personal strength is king. So there's a lot of stuff there about uh, a bunch of duels. And we also get some bonuses from prowess in military and courtiers and control and stuff. But you can all read that if you want to. Uh, it's too much for me to read right now. But it also enables the rule by might, which is the su succession law that I was talking about. And a successor is chosen among the ruler's ele eligible children, which will have to face any sibling who contests their claim in a duel to the death. So yeah, that's gonna be fun, which is why we want a bunch of kids. We also get our, our um, virtuous traits, which we know all about. Un unrelenting faith will give us prowess and... Uh, a little bit of uh, faith hostility advantage, and uh, we'll let the members of the clergy to serve as commanders. Which, I mean, that's not a big deal. This is also just, it's good to be virtuous, bad to be a sinner. Normal stuff. And uh, some interesting stuff in general about the religion is, we don't have bastards. If, if we have a kid, they're our kid. No questions asked. asked. It's just how it is. Um, adultery is also just fine. We can sleep with whoever we want. Who cares? And I also noticed a weird thing down here because we're the code, code of Malakath. I assumed we're worshipping Malakath, which is, uh, yeah, outdated prince. But for some reason, worship of Malakath is shunned, <laughs> but worship of Mephala is allowed. So I feel like uh, there's some boxes uh, ticked weirdly over here, but that's fine. There's a bunch of holy sites, doesn't do anything. We don't have any patrons because we're a monotheistic uh, religion, so that's fine. And our religion, oh, not religion, our culture is we like the mountains, we like the strongholds, that's very good. Uh, we also like only the strong, so our knights must have at least 12 prowess, which, uh, I mean, we're gonna get to eventually anyway, that's not gonna matter. Blade master traits are good, martial education traits are good. Men at Arms is going to be a little bit more expensive to get, but we get more knights and knight effectiveness plus a hundred percent. Which is why our champions are just going to be terminators. We're also going to get some extra bonus from, bonuses from that in uh, some lifestyle things that I planned. We're also staunch traditionalists, which is fine, and Garrison, Garrison Smiths, which is fine. You can read all of those and just pause if you want to. They're pretty standard. Got a bunch of these and... Uh, we don't have the greatest of uh, of learning, so taking anything but the uh, current exposure is kind of pointless because it's going to take 76 years. So I think, think we're just going to go with uh, alchemy and it's going to give us a small health boost and disease resistance, which is pretty nice. Just let us live longer, so I'm not against alchemy. So that's going to be fine. Now let's take a look at our realm. This is where we are going to go and change the succession right away and we're gonna have rule of might and everyone approves except for this filthy little human that's too cowardly to take part in a duel to the death so 
I don't care what he thinks. He's a human. It is gonna cost us a bunch of prestige, but I just want Rule of Might because I think it's the <laughs> the funnest thing about the orcs. So we are 100% gonna do that. It's probably gonna, well, hopefully gonna be another like 40 years before we have to see that in practice. But uh, just in case we die, I want them to fight over, fight to the death over the the throne. We also, I also want to pass the like crown authority things because uh, it's oh it's just good. We're gonna get more vassals and income or more levies and income and stuff. But we have to get to illustrious or devoted servant like fame or devotion wise before we can do that. So we're gonna work towards that and just gonna hit that as soon as we get to that. Our military is fairly large and we can have nine champions, although we really should have more than that. I guess uh, this is just gonna like activate once we unpause, I guess, but we should have six of them. And I guess we could just recruit you, honestly. You're not terrible and we are gonna fight right away and it's just 15 gold. So do you have any good, sk good stats? Yeah, you're, I mean, you're not great, but you're not the worst so yeah sure let's do that and our council do have some some good people although you need to you need to do something else you are our player heir and you're an excellent steward actually and a pretty good uh, spy master you're not really good on anything else you are not really that good on anything else well you're not a terrible diplomat but this guy is better and you're actually a really good steward, but our son is going to be the steward and only women can be our priests. But do we have anyone better? No, not really. Okay, so let's uh, switch you around because you are a way better steward. It's going to give us a bunch of, ex well, not a bunch of extra money. It's going to give us 9% extra money, basically. So that's going to be good. And uh, we're going to want a good marshal. And one of our sons are good, is a good marshal. So I do want you in a position. Who's gonna get kicked out of here once we actually give our son some land? I guess it will be you. You won't be a powerful vassal anymore after that. And we did have some other good, good ones among these. But yeah, that's, that's our son. So we might just keep it like this for now. We don't have any difficult um, wars ahead of us. So you can actually sit there. We'll give our son some titles because we're going to go and take like White Run stuff. We're going to take Helgen stuff and Novigrad and stuff like that. So our son is going to get some lands and then we'll probably slot him in there. And that's going to be good. Uh, we got our courtiers. And since we're not the greatest of mages, I would like a court mage. Although, we don't seem to have any good ones. So, I guess we're gonna have to wait on that. We're gonna be a little bit magic light to start, but that's gonna be fine. And I don't think there's anyone, any of the other ones I need right away. Maybe a uh, just personal champion for the, for the prestige, if we have any good ones. I mean, point two is pretty nice. It's not too expensive. But we might wait for someone better. Just save a little bit of money right now. And that's gonna be fine. In our decisions, we have reestablished Orsinium, which is, our, is going to be our short-term goal. And uh, we basically just need to get to Exalted Among Men, which is gonna be the hard part. Because we only, I mean, we're, we're an orc. We have a normal lifespan. We might live to like 80-ish, depending on, <laughs> on how healthy we are. Uh, we are fine. We have a, have a couple of things that is going to give us health boost and stuff. So we'll probably live fairly long, as long as we don't die in battle. And completely control Falkreath Falk, Falk is going to be pretty simple, because um, we already have most of this. So yeah, Exalted Abo Among Men is going to be the, the challenge. I'm also going to want to create a holy... Oh, <laughs> what's going on here? Um, I guess we will honor everything. Just in case we got the wrong god, we will just uh, honor all of the things. So, <laughs> okay, that's freaky looking. I'm going to turn that off and not look at that for until we can do that. 
And we can also commune with the totem spirits, which uh, we're gonna do when we unpause. And since we are a have a kingdom, we do have a court. We're gonna hold court soon, but I'm gonna start a war first. But we do have some banners, which is gonna give us some prestige, renowned, uh, guest opinion, and grandeur bonus, which is nice. And, oh, come on. <laughs> I couldn't hit it. Oh, uh, maybe I should have had a look at that. And this one just gives a little bit prestige, renowned, manitar, maintenance, and court grandeur. So that is very nice. We um, do have about middling um, expenditure, expenditures on our amenities. And I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to want to get a bunch of money, so that's all right. So I think that's all th everything I wanted to show. And that was also <laughs> quite a bit. So let's unpause, wait for our marriage proposal to hit. Oh, and we're also going to commune with the totem spirit. Talk to our little wise woman. There we go. I accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my acquaintance Thugneck in holy matrimony. Excellent. So you are going to assist ruler. And we are going to get um, a couple of points in a bunch of stuff. It is going to put us over, over domain or an extra domain holding limit. So that's pretty nice. So we can actually hold what we take next, but we'll see. So, let's uh, declare war on you. I want to take you before uh, before White Run eats you, because I feel like those are going to be our main rivals here. They're about our strength, and um, I'm guessing they're going to want Riverwood, so we're going to go and take that first, because it is uh, de jure land, and we're going to need it for Falkreath. So, let's just start that right away. Pop that over there, raise everybody. Now, we are gonna... Oh, there's the communion with the spirit. I've spent many many nights eagerly waiting for our wise woman to finish her communion. Over time, I nearly forgot about it, and after days of rituals, ritual trance, she finally summoned me, tell, telling she was confident in her predictions. The signs are clear, she stated. Uh, it's, a, it's time for a new beginnings and open minds. Great, thanks. It will give us open mind, a little bit extra learning, less stewardship, and monthly learning experience, which that might put us down again. <laughs> yeah, it did. Okay, that's all right. Right, we were also going to get some secondary spouses. We can take off the um, in inheritable, because I kind of just want alliances. And you are not weak. You are not that strong. Oh, you're mostly just uh, man at arms, though. You are pretty close by, but I uh, think we're gonna go with this because they have actual levies and champions and stuff. So. Oh, she's won! <laughs> well, I guess uh, we're just gonna uh, get a be betrothal. Okay, I don't seem to be able to say that properly. But. And let's send that proposal at least, just for the alliance. And let's pretend that isn't creepy as hell. And let's get rid of the pikemen. And probably just a couple of levies as well. How many did you have? Like 100? 500. Oh, that wasn't even the... Yeah, 500. So that's absolutely fine. We are gonna get rid of light footmen and bowmen. And probably get rid of some of these just... Just to save some money. That's going to be plenty. And then we're just going to go and slaughter them. Alliance. Excellent. So, I'm just going to see if we can get another alliance here. I mean, we can, but that's internal, so we don't really care about that. Um, I guess uh, go for prowess and... Uh, hey, we have a beautiful... Prowessy person here. Oh, she's a champion though. Maybe we should um, marry you to someone else, try to get a good warrior in here instead. You're intelligent. Let's... Uh... Actually, first, let's... I think our... Okay, first of all, I guess... Uh... No, that's cult, cult war. I <laughs> just saw... As... As I saw ally. And I wanted another ally. But no, we're not going to call you in. 
I'm not gonna give away a vassal. There, Mushroom can marry. So, let's find some inheritable... Okay, let's not find some inheritable traits. Can we instead just get some good prowess people? And when I say people, I don't want humans. That's weird. Oh, it's only humans. Okay, I guess we'll wait for that. I don't know why I can't marry or marry him off to uh, the person we found here, but that's uh, fine. Um, let's uh, let's just no, that's the champion. Let's just marry you, and that's fine. There we go. What else do we have here? We can declare a bunch of wars. I know that. Right, you can marry, but you don't have any good ones to marry. You need a guardian. And uh, you actually have a potential to be pretty strong. You have a martial education, excellent. And we're just gonna be, we're gonna be the guardian for you. And we can negotiate negotiate an alliance with our son. We're gonna do that. We can hire some people. We have a few champions, but we're pretty much there. And we're probably gonna go do a lap with um, marrying people off after this war. See if we can find some good champions to get into our court. But yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you, thank you. Oh, there they are. Let's start by going and killing those. St strategical impasse. I'm sitting around the map table with Chieftain Grognak and High Chieftain Madruk discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Grognak bangs her fist on the table and loudly proclaims she should charge the that we should charge the enemy directly and crush them with the sheer might of our armies. While Marduk explains how we need to watch what our foes do and respond accordingly. It might be it's my right to decide our ultimate course of action. So I know how we can employ both strategies. Oh cool. So, we got a bunch of stuff from that, and yeah, we're just gonna grab that, because that's the best of all the worlds. Nice. Oh, and... Oh! I didn't even see something happen! <laughs> um, how did that go? Um, we lost 64, we killed 500. Slaughtered every single one of their people. So, I guess... Uh... Yeah, okay, let's go and... Uh... Siege the uh, capital, actually, because that is <laughs> a lot easier to siege. And we already have 50% of the war score, so I think that's fine. Code of Malakath, Ex Exaltation. A passionate woman, Chieftain Grognak, has become famous in towns near, f near and far for her quick temper and violent nature. Only by castigating blasphemy swiftly and plainly can, she can sin be cleansed and Grog... Uh, Grognak has undoubtedly put the fear of, of God of Curses in countless worshippers with her frequent outbursts. Hey, more fervor. That's nice, I guess. And we're just gonna siege this real quick. They don't seem to have any troops, except for those, I guess. Are those uh, just levies, or did you actually get... Uh, did you actually get a... No, let me see the country. Did you actually get some mercenaries? Nah, that's just what they can scrape together. And that's the end of that war. I mean, we could go and uh, kill these guys just for fun. But I think we're just gonna finish this. End it. Get some fame and uh, some good stuff. Good things are to be had. And now we control most of this lake. Lake Ilnalta. Ilinalta. Okay. Very nice. So now we're over our domain holding limits. And, I mean, this place is fine, but um, since we got that, that, um, the tribe, the shaman thing, <laughs> we lost one of our domain holdings, so it's gonna be 10 years be before we can actually hold five things, and we only have a small hill fort here, so I think we're just gonna grab this to our, wait, do you have, no, you're unladded, so let's grant you... The South Brittle Shin, like so. Excellent. And uh, how about now? Do we have any better spouses now? Yeah, we do. Excellent. So, let's see if we can have some inheritable traits now. Oh, and you're pretty good. 
any hail or... Oh, you are hail, but you're also a human. Let's uh, not do that and instead just... Uh, he is strong, so that is going to be inheritable. I guess... Uh, I guess we can go with just quick. She has pretty good stats, so she's a pretty good co-ruler as well for him. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's good. Let's uh, let's grab you. There we go. But let's also take a look at our champions. And hey, we our wife is a champion as well. Excellent. So you're married. You're not married. And oh, we we can't find anyone. Or oh, it's still in. It's in inheritable. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, I guess uh, we don't really have any any people to marry off or marry them to, because uh, well, no one wants to, which is a little bit sad, but that's what it is. Maternal reproach. My mother uh, Mazga has been getting more irritable by the day as I sit on my throne, contemplating the possible causes. The woman herself storms towards me, just as she used to when I'd misbehaved as a child. Yashnag, my son, you have got to do something about your incompetent and overstretched servants. Don't you care what people think of you? This is in no way uh, this is no way for a king to present himself. At this rate, you will be a laughing stock of Falkrenth, nay, of all the mountain orcs. Yes, Baba, I'll fix it. <laughs> uh, set your court and many amenities to decent fashion. I thought we already had that. Ah, so you think you're you're better than my courtiers? Or have you considered devoting yourself to Malakath? Oh, she can become a monk. Um, let's not force our mother to become a monk. But we can make her a little bit mad and give get some prestige because I don't want to um, change this right now. So yeah, so let's uh, put her in her place. And while we're here, we might as well hold court. So, here are the partitioner. Chieftain Gore and Chieftain Gorzal jostle before me in, in the grip of some dispute. My lord, Gore spits, I have been seeking marriage with the radiant Grogmar for months, but uh, Gorzal, the, the churl, has gone after him as well. Gorzal pipes up indigent, indignantly. That is pure nonsense, my leash. The obnoxious churl had... Not even heard of the man until I introduced them in Falkrenth. Um, okay, so... I mean... I don't know if I care. <laughs> so, who do I like most? Um, he's a powerful vassal that's, uh, that we kind of want to keep happy. You're uh, kind of a nobody, so... I guess uh, Chieftain Gore of Bonechill? Can, uh, can ha can do it? Yeah, fine. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> a peasant woman stands before me, informing the court of her plea. The recent war took a toll on the countryside. We're not sure who the culprit was, but they looted an important cultural site to Cairo Nords from Shriekwind. Please, we beseech you, spare some of your resources so we, uh, so we can see it restored. The peasant ends her request with a clumsy bow, a clear indicator of her loan-born status. Now I can I pay a bunch of money for some cryonords? Who cares about that? But hmm, let's let's have a look at these cryonords. Oh, they, these are the guys. We have zero acceptance, so it doesn't matter if we lose some acceptance. So use the remaining material for other buildings, and cultural acceptance will. Lower, but building construction is cheaper, so that's fine. But more importantly, it does it won't upset the the peasants more than we already do from having zero cultural um, cultural acceptance. So let's go with that. A frightful peasant strolls all too close before a guard steps between us. Oh, he backs up with a wink and a laugh through scant teeth. Your lordness, I come here from Shriekwin with a matter of great import. His eyebrows undulate. You see, king, the mason's wife's sow slipped a, a fence one night and she, she she only went and got into the old herbalist's veggie path 
His pride and joy, tears of laughter streams through the convulsing peasant's face. You don't say. <laughs> well, we can get some popular opinion, which isn't necessarily bad. Ooh, development growth. And Prince Mark loses some opinion, but that's eh, probably fine. He likes us and he is terrified. Wait, no, that's that's not Prince Mark. You're Prince Mark and you like us even more, so that's fine. So let's just uh, have him talk to him instead. That's fine. We get some bonus and... Oh, what? Oh, did you take care of it by <laughs> murdering this innocent peasant? <laughs> oh, that is... That is not what I meant when I said take care of him. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine, I guess. So, let's um, continue our wars, I guess. We are gonna siege the Jur counties. And just go on to the next one. Just do it while no one else is. Because there are people... Well, actually, you're probably pretty safe, but... Uh, I was gonna do that anyway. So, let's just recruit local. Go and... Uh, go. Oh, what are you doing over there? I just saw this and thought it was under it or something and it's just bad at looking, but... Yeah, let's uh, get rid of some of those. Save some money. And yeah, you got 300 men. Let's uh, get rid of those. Oh, that might be a little bit too many. And just move you away so we can disband you. And just uh, start moving you up like so. Exotic arms. As, along with the, their strange goods, merchants bring tall tales from distant lands, unverifiable, full of wonder. A group of Cairo Nords peddlers purport to have brought Alinor, Alinori objects said to have come from the faraway courts of a great ruler, High, uh, High Kinlay Eldre, V5 of Lindril, no less. Okay, that was not easy to read. Tor Torolf, the leading trader, grins darkly. This unique mice could be yours for a special price, of course, great king. I, I like the yarn indeed, if only I had some way of verifying the hawker's story. Oh, I should have way more of a Swedish accent there. But we can get High King uh, Elendre's mace for seven prowess for all of our money. Um, I think we're gonna just hold off on that for now. It, was, it wasn't it was a bad mace, but uh, I'm gonna... Actually, I probably should have taken it, shouldn't I? Now, I regret it. Now I regret it. Dang it. Borzog brought my son Gorn to the market today. Gorn was to hand out alms to the poor and needy to learn about charity and a ruler's plight to the less fortunate. He refused, uh, to, he refused to give a single coin to anyone. Borzog ex exclaims, everyone we meet were either undeserving or beneath him. In the end, he kept the gold. Gorn seems to have developed an egotistical streak. So, Arrogant is... Uh, well, it's a lot of prestige. Which isn't bad. We do like prestige. Uh, generous is not necessarily good. Fickle is uh, pretty alright. But, honestly, Arrogant is kind of okay. Prestige is good. You are better than them. <laughs> So, no, we should be leading. We are king, we lead. And we have really good commander stats, so... Let's just go and slaughter these guys. Borsog's missing hides. Borsog approaches me with a grave face before I can ask her anything. Tell me... Uh, before I can ask her anything, tells me that she woke up this morning to find out that she's been robbed. As servants recounted by some Ket Keptu who stole precious hair hides from her. Borsog asks for my help and waits for my response. So, yeah, let's gather an entourage and go bust some skulls. Borsog's missing hides. The entourage return with some surprising news. The cat, the cat kept to responsible were actually under direct orders of the respected Momu. Momu? <laughs> Are you Momu or... Okay, I was wondering if uh, she was under the order of an orc called Momu, because that would have been hilarious, but whatever. Uh, Momu was very offended by Borzog, even though she has a silly name. 
Speaking to the warriors that, that the entourage brought to me to confirm the story that Borzog was stealing hides from the camps, uh, camps heard pro proved to be true. Um, they were taking, taking back what was rightfully theirs. So, the hide clearly belongs to Ket Keptu, which get us some foreign respect. Or, the hides belong to Borzog. I won't f fall for those Ket Keptu tricks. For an insult. So, 10 years of foreign culture opinion. But it will give us uh, prestige and dread. So, let's take what's ours. And that was a pretty... Actually, they did pretty well. Good for them. But we got a bunch of fame from it. And this is gonna take forever, it seems. Come on, let me... 17 months. So, let's start by just hunting these guys down. Finishing them off. Make sure they don't have anything left. There we go. Hey, she become pregnant. Nice. More kids. More kids for the battery al. Yes. Yes. Oh, can we? We can't enforce her. Nah. Yeah, I was curious. But yeah, they're just gonna. Hey, a valuable hostage. My babies. With a tired yet blissful smile, Ulu presents me with two perfect little children. My little children were born under the sign of the Lord. Those born under the sign are said to be stronger and healthier than those born under other signs. Who will you become, my dear? And what will I call you? Golfim and Moll. I like Golfim. Uh, you're a daughter and they're both... No, okay. Son and daughter. Moll sounds dumb. So let's... Othmash. There's a strong name. You shall be Othmash. And... Ooh, you're intelligent. Very nice. And... Oh, you're sickly. No! My intelligent little sickly child. All babies cry, but little Golfim, there is no end to the tears. I desperately want the midwife to ease my worries, but her furrowed brow makes everything worse. The little lady is not gaining weight as she should. We'll take good care of her, my lord, but in the end, her life is in the orc father's hands. Hush now, Golfim. Please don't cry. Aw, oh, man. That usually doesn't end well. And okay, we capture them, so let's just finish that. Get a little bit of money from that, and uh, let's see if we can just ransom them. So, we can ransom you for a bunch of money. And I guess they only have... 27 gold all in all so let's uh you're the jarl yeah yeah so let's ransom you pay me and you'll go free we'll still have yeah we'll still have the the uh, war score to win this so hey free money excellent more expansion and uh, I guess he kept, gets to keep it. That's all right. He's a follower of Kine. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I also wanted to see what the Lord birth sign was. And I said it was stronger than other. It's just diplomacy and steward. I thought it was going to be prowess or something. But, oh well. I mean, you're really... You got really good stats for a... For a toddler. Or, I guess, baby. I don't know. When do you become a toddler? <laughs> uh, for a baby. So that's excellent. You're going to be a martial trained. Like all my kids. And you're not going to find a spouse yet. It's not exactly time for that. Oh. Please don't crash. Thank you. <laughs> Get a little bit worried there. And. Uh, oh you have an ally. Good for you. But that doesn't matter. We are... Actually, how much of Falkreath do you hold? Okay, all of Helgen is Falkreath. So we need to take all of it. And that is actually like three counties, it seems. So I guess we are going to go and take like Ember Shard first. Because I don't want White Run to go and take it. So let's declare war on you as well. We're going to seize a du jour county and we're going to take Ember Shard. And yeah, we're still way stronger, so that's... Oh, actually, have we already been doing this for over two years? Great. 
Land raid it is. Nice. Uh, we are going to go down like sappers and strategist next. Just because, uh, I mean, strategist is pretty good. We uh, don't get the river crossings and straits. And uh, we get way more enemy fatal casualties, which is which is excellent. And some martial and diplomacy is pretty good. And Sapper is gonna make our, well, some of our men-at-arms do siege progress, which is also great. But we are gonna move over to Gallant afterwards, because this is, like, what I plan to have. At least the right side of this. Because we'll get some prowess, we'll lower the risk of uh, dying in uh, combat, which is very good. But um, chivalry, chivalric dominance will give us a bunch more knight effectiveness. It will give us more or less friendly fatal casualties and advantage. And household guard will give us a bunch of knights. So this whole side is just so good for making our fucking like, orc terminators. Our orc immortals. The other side is just kind of stuff for uh, scheming. And who cares about scheming when you can just... Plant an axe in his brain. And Gallant is pretty good though, but I mostly want the right side. And then we might just go for Plunderer, because that's just good for Plunder. But we have a war to win. So, raise local, I guess. We are gonna just disband the stuff again, just to save a little bit of money, because our champions are gonna do most of the work. And we still have way more levies than they, they do. So, why is the, why is the like, uh, unit banner so far away from where they start sometimes? Like, it was over here, but they were chilling like in Shriekwind. So, I don't know what's going on with that. And we are commanding, so that is fine. We, I think we can do this on high speed. Because, uh, well, there is nothing they can do against us. One of the children at court, Zutag, has taken the doll of a younger girl and thrown it into a nearby cave. My son was there and saw it all happen. Gorn got hold of the household guards and forced Zutag to go into the cave. Zutag, Zutag's terrifying scream could be he heard from several, for several minutes before she emerged with the toy. It seems like that Gorn thinks something the right, something the right thing to do. He won't stop until he makes it right. So, stubborn. It's, um, it's alright. You should have gone in there yourself, without fear. Which will give him brave, which is great. Brave is like, top trade for us. Or wrathful, which is also like, top tier trade for us. But I think brave is just slightly better, even though <laughs> they're way more likely to die in battle. Which, I guess I don't want. You're... I think you'll grow up to be pretty strong. Right now you're st stubborn. I mean, brave is just so good, except for the chance to die. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, it's really good, except for that extra chance of death. <laughs> Sounds like um, when you read read uh, read some uh, side effects of some uh, medicines or something. Oh, it will be all, all be fine, except for the tiny chance of instant death. But I'm, I'm just gonna have to go for Brave. Brave is just so good, and uh, it's thematically awesome. Now, let's send our Brave people in and slaughter those people. Our bravery, or their men, is no match for our bravery. And uh, that's actually a really quick win. Kind of want to go and kill these guys as well. Yeah, go and slaughter them. There we go. How dare you try to help your friend? We'll gr grab some fame from that. And uh, did we... Oh, this is... Is this the Allies or... Or is that Helgen? Yeah, that's the Allies. So I can probably just uh, ransom you off. No, nope, they don't have any money. Oh, well, they might have money, but they won't accept it. So I guess uh, they're gonna rot in our prison. It's not my fault. You did this, or, well, you didn't do it to themselves, but uh, if they didn't want them to sit and rot in prison, they should have paid for it. So, yeah. Oh, I have been, I've been playing for a long time now. Uh, we should probably end this episode here.
But I have arrived in Grey Pine Hall to pay homage to you, glorious king, as a show of my loyalty. I hope my pledge of submission alone is evidence enough of my uh, enough of my honor. So, let's no, let's receive him in the royal court. Homage, taking the knee. I wait patiently for my th uh, on my throne for the arrival of Chieftain Gore, who is soon announced and ushered before me. He kneels in deference, offering nothing but his oath to faithfully serve as a vassal of the kingdom. At last, I bid the chieftain ar arise, confirming my satisfaction as Gore writes to, to lands he rules in my stead. Oh, who are you? You're... Uh, okay, you're in bone chill. That's, that's fine. But you will serve me. We gain some prestige, renown, and court grandeur. Nice. But I think that is definitely time to end this episode. But uh, we only need to finish off Helgen for to get the all of Falcon Wreath or Falk Renth. and we still need to get to well, um, exalted among men. So we need to get to tier 5 which is gonna take a while but we'll get there so yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this first episode and if you did consider leaving a like comment and subscribe for more of this and i'll see you next time bye bye